Alright, hello everyone. My name is Adrian Fernandez from uh, Texas Instruments, and I'm here to uh, do a quick tutorial featuring the uh, the new e-paper displays coming out of uh, Pervasive Displays or Repaper. It's a great third party of ours, and they've developed a really cool ultra low power e-paper technology that's really easy to use um, and pairs very well with our Launchpad uh, development kits. So I've got two flavors here. This is a 2.7 inch e-paper display, and this one here is the 2 inch. They also offer a 1.44 inch uh, variant. Uh, but notice the booster pack's the same. Uh, you can simply swap out the displays uh, thanks to this uh, little ribbon cable adapter here. So you can simply switch out the different display sizes depending on your particular requirements. Um, but I've got the website open here, uh, pervasivedisplays.com. Um, and here you can see the uh, the three part numbers. So they come bundled with the display depending on the, uh, the size you're looking for. Um, and they have a nice buy now link, which links directly to DigiKey. Um, so for this quick demo, uh, we'll, we'll show you how to get it up and running very quickly using Code Composer Studio. Um, so I'm going to be using my MSP430 uh, G2553 Launchpad. This is available for $9.99, so very affordable. Um, many of you probably already have one of these laying around. So we're going to use this guy to, uh, to interface with our e-paper display. Um, so let me just jump to the slides here. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to take our G2 Launchpad and we want to make sure that the uh, the jumper here is set to the hardware UART position. Um, so we can do that by simply rotating the, the left two most jumpers uh, in the horizontal um, configuration. Um, and you can see a screenshot of that here. So this allows us to ensure that we're using the hardware UART of, of the microcontroller device. Uh, next, go ahead and plug it in over USB. Um, and then again, in this example, we're going to be using Code Composer Studio, which is TI's Eclipse-based um, IDE. So we can go ahead and open up Code Composer Studio, which is what I've got here. And we can go ahead and import the, uh, the project that we're going to use. Um, so we just go to uh, Project, import existing CCS project and we can browse to the ePaper display project and I'll have a link to where you can download this project um, but I've got it here located in my C drive and then I'm just gonna go ahead and click on CCS demo e-ink and hit OK. Um, Code Composer Studio finds my project and I can go ahead and hit finish to import that into my workspace. Very good. So now you can see that I've got it here inside of Code Composer Studio. Um, perfect. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide here. Alrighty, so that's what we just did. We just imported it. Um, so now that we have it imported, we do need to make a small modification to the code. So the code allows us to interface with either the 1.44, the 2 inch, or the 2.7 inch display. Um, so in our code, we need to tell it which display we're using by simply uh, using uh, this pound defines here. So you can find the uh, code we need to edit in the image underscore data dot h file. So just navigate the source, image underscore data dot h, double click on that, and we can go ahead and modify it as needed. So you can see we have these uh, three pound defines, um, and by using these three, we basically can tell the code which display we're using. Um, and in this particular example, let's go ahead and use the uh, the 2.7 inch uh, display, which is what I've got here. So uh, in this line of code, it's already defaulted to use the 270, um, which is a 2.7 inch display. If we wanted to use the 1.44 or the two inch display, we simply change that uh, like so. So this will change it to use a two, two inch display, but I wanna use this 2.7 inch. So we're gonna go ahead and use that pound defined. And that's it, that's the only modification we need to make to the code. Great, so let's go ahead and see what's next on our slides here. Now we can go ahead and compile and download this code to your launchpad. So all we have to do is hit this green button here on our Code Composer Studio toolbar, and that will load the code to our launchpad. So it'll compile it and download it to our microcontroller. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, yep, we made some changes there, so we'll hit OK. Um, and that will compile and download our code into the launchpad device, and it'll take a second to, to compile it into, into the flash memory of the launchpad. So we'll go ahead and let it do that. Um, and then once that's done programming, we'll go ahead and plug our booster pack in, uh, into our launchpad. 
so that we can see here it's about nine percent done here taking a taking a second to compile and download that code into our launch pad and once it's compiled and downloaded code composer studio will jump to a debug window or a debug view so right now as you can see we're in the edit view um, and this is where we can navigate around our project explorer see all the different files associated to our code composer studio project um, and we can also edit and modify the code at this viewpoint um, but once it's done compiling and downloading, it'll jump us to the CCS debug uh, view. And that's where we can set breakpoints, we can pause our code, step through our code, watch variables, etc. Um, so uh, we'll let it finish up here. Okay, and once it's done compiling and downloading, we'll be able to hit the, the play button or the start button. And this will actually cause the, uh, the code to start executing. So here we can go ahead and hit proceed. Okay, uh, now it's finishing up the compilation and the downloading to our device. Should just be a few more seconds here. Um, almost there. Perfect. So it just loaded into our Launchpad device. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the booster pack onto our Launchpad now, the, uh, the 2.7 inch version. And I'm plugging it in like so. Okay. So that's what it should look like. Um, oops. I don't have that taped down. Um, but there you go. That's what your uh, booster pack should look like when it's plugged in. Okay. got it right so there you go so plugged in to your launch pad like so uh, the display should be on the right side of your launch pad um, that would be the, the right orientation so now that I've got it plugged in I'm gonna go ahead and hit the run button just like the PowerPoint's telling me to just go ahead and hit that and that will start the code execution so now the launch pad is talking to my computer um, great so now that we've done that let's take a look at our PowerPoint slide see what the next step is Next, we're going to use this toolkit, this EPD kit tool. Um, that's also available in the zip file that uh, will be available. Um, and go ahead and download and install that into your computer. I've already done that. Um, and I will go ahead and uh, once it's installed, go ahead and run it. Okay. And this is what the tool looks like once you're running it. So this will allow you to actually interface with your launch pad and booster pack in real time um, and you're going to communicate it uh, with your launch pad over UART. So again, remember we used jumpers to select hardware UART. We have the appropriate code now loaded into our launch pad. Um, and through the PC, we'll be able to actually send dis uh, images to the booster pack to be displayed. Um, so as the, as the uh, PowerPoint here says, we can click the scan button. Um, and that's going to look for the launch pad that's plugged in over USB communicating to our computer over serial over UART. Um, so hopefully uh, it should appear here in the drop down menu um, in a few seconds here. So we'll let it finish scanning. Time we can make sure that we're using the right display size 2.7 inch that's uh, exactly the size of the booster pack we're using um, and there you go the GUI here found our launch pad connected to COM port 68 in my particular instance uh, your launch pad might populate a different COM port but regardless the graphical interface tool here finds it and once we have the right selection we choose the right uh, e-paper display size we hit the connect button and we're going to see some information here in a hyper terminal um, and Right off the bat, our launch pad and PC are actually communicating, and the launch pad is reporting back temperature. Um, so the MSP430 device has a built in temperature sensor, and it's simply sending that data to our graphical interface here. So we can tell immediately that that UART connection is working. Uh, perfect. So now that we've hit connect, the next step is to uh, take a look at the GUI. So we have a few functions here, there are four tabs. Uh, each tab is capable of different functions, but the simplest one is the drawing tab. 
um, so we can pass in lines uh, just simply using the default thing here and I'm going to hold up the booster pack to the camera so if I wanted to uh, send this default line go ahead and hit send you got some information coming in here and you can see we're actually sending that uh, data all over UART and eventually that image will display on our ePaper display and there you go so you can see I've got one line there so we, it, it correlates perfectly with the preview um, same thing I can do circles I can preview it first that's what it'll look like go ahead and hit send um, and that circle should then display on the booster pack and there you go the circle um, so we can also load images so by clicking on that button uh, this graphical interface actually comes with a few different images. We just simply choose the uh, dimensions that we care about, in this case 2.7 inches. Uh, we can send a black image, a white image, or some of these more uh, interesting examples. So we can choose this uh, uh, image of a printer here, for example. Simply double clicking on that image will immediately cause it to download to your launchpad. Um, and I think uh, you'll be pleased with how that turns out here on the display. So we're just simply going to replace that circle image and there you go. So you can see we've got really great contrast um, and great resolution as well. Um, so my, my webcam isn't the, the clearest, um, but you can actually read that very well. Um, ePaper has great contrast, they're great for reading in, in uh, highlight, uh, highlight uh, situations or environments. Um, and it looks very much like what you might find on, on an e-reader uh, type of product. Um, this particular example is really showcasing electronic shelf labeling. Um, so as you can see, this could very well be seen on a shelf at a department store. Um, and it'll be very easy to, to update um, as price changes or your inventory changes. Um, simply, we can load up another image here. Let's try the Launchpad one. This is the one that I created. Um, and it's very easy to create your own. Um, these are simply uh, uh, bitmap uh, files. So as long as your bitmap has the right dimensions, you can go ahead and create it in Microsoft Paint or whatever software you decide to use um, and send that over uh, very easily over UART to your Launchpad device. And uh, there you go. So just like that, a very cool, easy way to demonstrate and showcase ePaper technology using the launch pad and this booster pack. Um, some of the other functions here, so that was the drawing one. There's also a slideshow version. So here you can actually create a multi-slide slideshow. So you can switch between different images and actually change out the contents of the display. Um, there's an ASCII mode. You can pass in uh, characters to the display. Um, and then there's a few others. So you can actually display temperature, for example. We can also uh, trigger the LED of the launch pad to work. Uh, we can also pull the firmware version of the ePaper booster pack as well. So the GUI that we're showcasing here is very capable, has quite a lot of different options. Um, and that's really that's really it. Uh, last thing, again, ePaper only needs power to uh, actually change the contents of the display. So I can actually unplug the USB cable here. Um, and without any power, I can actually still maintain that image and content um, on the ePaper display. Um, so that's that. That's the uh, ePaper booster pack from Pervasive Displays, um, working alongside with the graphical interface and TI's Code Composer Studio. Um, and again, you can find more information of this booster pack here at pervasivedisplays.com. Um, you can find more information on Launchpad at ti.com slash launchpad. Um, and thank you very much for watching. That's it.